Steven Spielberg made a movie, sort of. I think it was Steven Spielberg. Don't, don't correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Steven Spielberg made a movie. Big success. One of the best success movies for a very long time with a big name attached to it. Due to the popularity of that movie, other movies were born. Other franchises were birthed. Celebrities were made. And it's all because of the Gremlins. And I want to talk about some of the films that birthed Leonardo DiCaprio's career. So I want to cover off the, the top Gremlins rip-off movies that I could think of at the time. There probably is more than this, and I will get to them sooner or later. But these are the ones we're starting with, okay? I'm going to have to rank these films in some capacity. So I've, I've worked out a system based on quality, comparability. Are they comparable to the, you know, the original Gremlins material? And the monster themselves. Do I like the design of the monsters? Or the name of the monsters? The lore of the monsters? I'll include all that information in as we go. We're going to start with Ghoulies. Ghoulies is one of them films that I have seen multiple times. It's a very important movie to me because it is the point that I know where cheap knockoff cinema has begun. Ghoulies is a collection of movies. Okay, I think there's four, including the time that they go to college. But I'm only going to talk about the first one. In fact, for all of these films, I will only talk about the first ones because I think the first one is where they start off as knockoffs and maybe, maybe they evolve out of the knockoff territory. But to begin with, Ghoulies is most definitely a Gremlins knockoff. We follow a young boy. Well, he doesn't look young. He looks about 35, but he's meant to be a teenager. He's meant to be in school. He is given his, his father's mansion is handed down to him after his father is, is, is tragically killed in a freak summoning accident. Yes, the man is a Satanist. All, all good films should begin with cults. Okay, that's my opinion. I've said it before and I'll say it again. All good movies should begin with cults. Let's say he does die doing wizard stuff, which is really important to the plot because the wizard stuff is the, is the connection tissues between, between these two movies. During a house party, and that's important, it's a, there is a house party. The reason this is important is not solely because of this film, but because film's coming up. There is a house party where as part of a gag, as part of a gaff, he decides, I am going to read from my father's Satan book, which he does, and promptly drops out of college pretty much the next day after. He and his friends, although his friends do not know about this yet, go downstairs into a basement where his father died and create a summoning circle where they summon some, some ghoulies which down, sounds like another word for testicles, but it's not. Trust us, it's not another word for testicles. It's whatever these creatures are. He summons some cheeky little ghoulies around, okay? Who look like weird, sweaty. You know what they remind me of? They remind me, they look like they're made of the, the ham that you get in dairy stackables or dairy lunchables. You, they look like the meat you get in the, the turkey and the ham that you get in dairy lunchables that's what they look like that's what they remind me of sweaty all the time just constantly sweaty uh and this these are the creatures we're, we're here for there is some um little people in this film as well they sort of help them towards the they ba i barely remember what they do but the most important people are and i've wrote them down here fish ghouly cat ghouly rat ghouly you can guess what's going on here flying ghouly and my favorite who is not in all the movies. In fact, he's, I think he's in one. Toad Ghoulie. Handsome young chap. Look at him. Look at how handsome he is. These are the Ghoulies. Uh, much like the Gremlins, they, there is different types. There's different flavours of Ghoulies. And they all have their own special abilities. Um, one can fly, as you can tell. One just looks like a rat. One looks like a cat. One can swim. I don't know if they can all swim. But one specifically, Fish Ghoulie, can swim because he's, he's Fish Ghoulie. He hangs around in a toilet. That's on the cover. But Jonathan Grave, who is the now owner, he summons the ghoulies. They make a mess. They do a lot of, you know, Gremlins-esque stuff. He gets his friends around to officially summon the ghoulies fully. They, and that's when they go crazy. Um, one of the friends is killed by a, a, a underwear-clad woman with a really long tongue. Uh, they sort of get attacked. He, ha he brainwashes his girlfriend. The film is not, is a mess, okay? The film is a mess, but damn is it a good mess. It's, it's a movie that I've rewatched multiple times and I will rewatch it again and I will show anybody who is willing to watch it with me. As time has gone on, I personally now prefer Ghoulies Go to College, but I think Ghoulies 1 has a special place in my heart as proof that bad movies deserve love too. 
I say we had to rank it. Ranking is difficult. And we're going to rank them out of five here. First of all, quality. Now, the quality of the film, the first one, probably a two. But if I'm going to include them all in this ranking, I'm going to knock it up to a three. They're hit and miss. Gully's good college. Chef's kiss. That would probably be a four or a five. But we'll just stick it directly in a three here. Comparability. Ghoulies 1 is nothing like Gremlins. Nothing at all. Okay. Other than there's a bunch of monsters wreaking havoc. The plots do not align whatsoever, shape or form. So we're going to whack that in at 1. Sorry, Ghoulies. You are not a good enough ripoff to be considered a ripoff in my mind. The monsters. Now, this is important. Okay. The monsters in this are, in my opinion, better than the Gremlins monsters. Because... The Gremlins monsters, and I'm only, I'm going to really just focus on Gremlins one because we're focused on the first films of all these. The Ghoulies have multiple designs, multiple monsters, multiple scary creatures, and they have uses like they're an evolutionary chain. Chef's kiss. The film that comes to mind and maybe comes to mind more than Ghoulies is Critters. Now Critters is another one of the films I have seen multiple times. It sits directly as, in my opinion, the most ripoff Gremlins movie. Design-wise, they're hairy furballs. They they roll into balls. They make chirping noises. They're they're gremlins. They're gremlins, but from space. Gremlins. He just finds them in a box in Chinatown. Critters. There's a point of origin with critters. They come from space, which gives them a better plot as well. The bounty hunter scenes. The guy who the chameleon face guys. Amazing. All of it amazing. But it is a gremlins ripoff. <laughs> We can't lie about that. The big difference, though, is Gremlins, there's two of them. Okay, there's two movies. Critters, they're still making these things. 2019, Critters Attack came out. They've made a short film in 2022. They're still making Critters movies. They're still doing it. I think the big thing with Critters is it is the movie that launched a thousand ships. Billy Zane is in them. Leonardo DiCaprio is in them. Scott Grimes is in them. He's the guy from that Star Trek ripoff. Although it is the original Gremlins ripoff, I feel it's not the most Gremlins movie. Okay? It's not the most... I wouldn't put it down as incredibly Gremlins-esque. When I started this project, I thought, God damn, this is the Gremlins ripoff that I'm going to talk about the most. But it's just not. It gets worse. So, because of that, we're going to have to rank this with the three-point system. Quality, four again. Boom, boom, boom. I love the Critters movie. As they go on, they get better. The the effects, the the ship, amazing. All of it really good. The again the the face transforming, Chef's kiss. The the copy pasta of the movie, you know, the copy paste of it, or you know, the the comparability of the movie. We're giving it a two. It's not that comparable. Okay, it's similar enough that you could say, well, this is a ripoff, but it's not an exact duplication the monster the critters monster other than when it goes really giant okay a big three as they go on they give them more character but originally i like the design of the critters themselves but the original design doesn't change that much okay there's just thirty thousand of the same thing so we're giving it a bit fat three it's right in the middle not bad not terrible munchies 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 have you got the munchies i don't want the munchies now that I've seen this movie. Um, well, stuff on the stuff on the top. They're old creatures from a different country. Okay, gremlins. They're in Chinatown. So I presume they were meant to be Chinese. In fact, I think the animated show makes them officially Chinese. Munchies are from Peru. Okay, boom, straight away we got a, we got ding 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 ding. We got a match. Okay, they're found in a distant land from a shaggy head young man and his father is this gremlins am i describing gremlins to you they, they steal the creatures from peru and then they bring that creature to america they also include an uptight you know citizen in this movie this time it's a cop last time it was like the guy you know the guy he's like i think he's ex-military in the other one he, they included like a, an uptight character which Standard. Okay, right. We're already, again, we're just in Gremlins territory still. The the munchie lives in a little bag instead of a box. Just so they could do the same... Oh, he eats a lot as well. Just so they could do the same handout thing. You know, where he's like... Ah, ah. The big difference, though, is this guy loves honk. 
the little the little guy who lives in the bag addicted to pornography <laughs> this film also has an antagonist just to add an extra layer the antagonist is is uh the he's sort of like um dim dimmy dome of the dimmy domes doug dimmy owner of the dimsdale dimmy dome is that what his name is that's right doug dimmy dome owner of the dimsdale dimmy dome it, it's all like him okay uh he steals the munchie well his son stepson steals the munchie which in this case he's like a big a big old hippie he steals the munchie the the munchie is called arnold this this is 30 minutes in at this point and this is where we finally see the munchie who is sort of dressed like a jawa or what i thought of is the the goombas from the mario movie insanity ensues there is only one munchie so far he really annoys the hippie guy who's meant to be like calm and relaxed and you know on drugs he uh he, he annoys them the living daylights out of him so what does the hippie guy do chop him in two that's how they duplicate we're in gremlins territory he duplicates the munchie by cutting him in, in in multiple pieces and then there's four munchies we've got rules now we've got law we've got backstory this is what gremlins is to me some of them are also hippies okay i don't know why i don't know maybe it's like a like a mother daughter you know like a bird sees its mother they've all got different characters they've all got different voices they've all i think all got the same name i'm not sure it's a mess the whole thing of them is just running havoc in the town the protagonist the hippie guy gone that's important because i don't know why maybe they wrote him out i don't know why they wrote him out okay but he's gone gremlins don't kill people so that's that's good they're running through the town there's like a love affair between the cop dad and the the stepson's mother they both call the step the, the hippie guy the the mother and the father both call him stepson i don't know whose kid it is i don't know whose kid it is insanity ensues they want to kill the munchies but they don't know how if they blow them up there'll be more munchies they find out what it is it's an aztec statue that's brought to life if they electrocute it it'll become a statue again all of them turned back to stone they also rip off et i should probably include that they rip off et they're really ripping off everybody they can get a hold of but everything is fine because of electricity quality of the movie three i have adjusted that slightly since watching it i give it a two but you'll find out why i give it a three in a minute the comparability a fat five top comparability it's the same movie they did try they really try to make the same movie and get away with it the monsters one uh, there's just something shit about them there's something so bad about the munchies monsters they again look sort of greasy but not in a good way like the ghoulies ones do they look sort of greasy they've got terrible haircuts um and they look like either sick et the the um gargoyle from the gargoyles tv show but the one that looks anemic um and they're dressed as Jawas slash the Goombas. All of it. None of it works together. Okay. Why are they dressed? When you chop them up, they're still dressed in the same clothing. Is that part of their body? I don't know. Hobgoblins. As the name suggests, hobgoblins are goblins. This is 1988, so we're getting further away from the gremlins now. They're sort of photocopying photocopies at this point. Which again, I am not against. I am all for... The further away from gremlins we can get, the crazier we're going to go. We have a young night watchman join the team of... They're looking after an old cinema studio, uh, film studio. But for some reason, one of the buildings is is locked. One of the parts of the buildings is locked. They open it and you hear... <laughs> gremlin noises. We, we hear gremlin noises, okay? Dead. Already. Faster than any other film. We've got a casualty. <laughs> very quickly possibly in the next night he is replaced by a guy i don't remember any of the characters names they're all very bland the guy has a girlfriend who's a bit prudish the the he has a, a a friend who's a girl who is like an absolute slag that's the that's the joke is she's a slag every room she goes into from the beginning of the movie every room everybody knows her name and the horny girls boyfriend who is a military man that's literally his description i couldn't make him any he's just gun obsessed he's death obsessed it's all he cares about bing bing bang bang shoot shoot poo poo people are deceased and then the last but not least but probably the least important character really is 
um, horny man. There's a horny man. He's addicted to calling sex lines. That's really what he's there for. The first thing you do is he's like, can I use your phone? I'm calling the sex line. He doesn't tell anybody he's calling the sex line. He has a girlfriend. Rules. I love when these things get rules. The last ones, stuff for the chopping up thing, didn't get rules. These guys have rules. They're attracted by power or lights. They see lights, but it seems to be just electricity, really. And they give people their wildest fantasies. Physically, in the flesh, their wildest fantasies. Not a metaphorical fi wildest fantasy, like you get trapped in your own mind. Literal, your wildest fantasies. So the horny guy who keeps calling the same sex line, his sex line operator picks him up in a car. Boom. He is sorted. They go drive to him like a make-out point, tries to get, you know, the, the manifestation of his deepest, darkest secret, tries to kill him. Turns out that's a hobgoblin. They kill that hobgoblin. There is three hobgoblins left. I don't know why there's always four of these creatures, but there is three hobgoblins left. They go to a bunch of different places, just wherever they think of could be the brightest lights, and they take out another hobgoblin. Okay, the 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 uptight girl is now doing like a burlesque show. Um, the the guy who's addicted to killing people, he suddenly um. Suddenly he's like a Rambo character in, in the same bar. He ironically takes out a lot of the hobgoblins because he his dream is to to remove people from this earth and he gets that dream and it really backfires on the hobgoblins. They've got until the end of the night to get rid of them because if the sun comes up, they'll be too powerful to get rid of. But for some reason, all of them just end up being sexy or having sex. So that's all they dream about, being sexy or having sex. It's a fang film, okay, it's worth a watch. It is kind of funny. Quality of the movie, two. Compar the comparability, I'm gonna give it a four because there's rules. They don't normally give these characters rules. They don't think about giving them rules or law. And then the monsters, two. Um, All four of them are the same. Their puppets are kind of cool looking, they all, but they all look like cat ghoulie. The cat ghoulie from ghoulies, they all sort of look like that. And then that sort of takes away from it. The only one, and the winner of today's gremlin knockoff of event, you know, like victory royale in this, The Gate. I have never seen The Gate before. This is the first time watching it. Loved it, okay? Straight off the bat, it just looks better than the other four, okay? Just immediately is a better looking movie. It's another one that starts with a house party. I don't know what is with. Does gremlin start with a house party? I don't remember if it does. It starts with a Christmas party. Does that count? These guys are digging up their backyard and they find a massive geode. Okay. Drag it out the ground. Inside the geode is like a note that has writing on it. It's like one of them etch-a-sketch style things where like a kid's, you know, like where you get them for like a birthday party. On that, they read it. It's very evil dead feeling. These two kids read it and these kids are young. Which opens a hole to hell in the backyard where the geode came out of. This is where bad stuff starts happening. First of all, the weird skinny kid, who's like the best friend of the main guy, he is dancing with a very attractive woman. Again, this is again like Ghoulies. This feels like it's a copy of Ghoulies because that is something that happens in Ghoulies. The guy's imagining and he's dancing with a very attractive woman. And then the woman turns out to be the dog, the family dog, and then the family dog dies. Does the dog die? Yes, the dog does. We find out because the kid goes, the skinny kid who killed the dog, who off, the skinny kid who off the dog, um, goes home, obviously, where his parents have run away, I think, um, and he finds an album, plays the album. Oh, it turns out the album is connected to the, the, the demons from the gate. The album is called The Gate, hence the name of the thing. Um, and that's going to give us all the clues we're going to need to close the gate because they've because they've already worked out its demons. That night, because this kid keeps dreaming about the most savage stuff and it all actually happens, he dreams, I dream of a genie, but the genie is moths. Moths, giant moths smash his window, uh, ruin his carpet, a one. And they're trying to wake up the friend, the friend who was again sleeping over because his parents have run away. And they, they rip off the thing to wake him up. Oh no, it's the unalive dog again. Why, why is this unalive dog getting everywhere? They've already buried it once. The demon also has some sort of weird foot thing because he steals a sock. That's I don't think that's massively important, but he does steal a sock. And in a very evil dead looking scene, the kid goes out, he sees his dad, and then 
the kid just crushes his dad's head in his hands. Well, he doesn't crush it, but it sort of disintegrates in his hands, and it's all very Evil Dead. It reminded me a bit of the the dancing scene of Evil Dead. Now we do get to see the monsters fully because originally all we saw was like hands coming out and they look awful. But the the monster designs terrible. So that's the only downfall of this film. It looks dog toffee, but there is some stop motion bits in it. Look amazing. There's such a night and day between the puppets and the stop frame stuff. The puppets look like the Street Shark advert with Vin Diesel, and the stop frame animation looks amazing. It looks Jason and the Organauts level of stop motion. Thirty minutes in, they close the hole. They, they've de-demonize the house thank god for that there's only an hour left of the movie so obviously something else goes wrong zombie there's just a zombie man in the in the mirrors and in the walls he grabs the the kid whose parents run away grabs him he's a zombie now zombie child what else do they do they summon a giant version of themselves who has extra arms little tiny ones on his shoulder blades don't know why um they summon a giant one which creates a new hole to get more demons out, I guess maybe that was the plan, I don't know. Who high fives the child. High five. Now the child has an eye in his hand. Again, now I'm getting Army of Darkness vibes. You know where he's got the little eye in his shoulder, he's like, ah! It's very, can I copy your homework for Evil Dead more than it is a Gremlins movie. Billy, because I don't actually remember the kid's name, the main kid, I'm calling him Billy now, shoots a rocket into the demon sky orifice, which closes it up. No explanation needed. The dog alive now nobody explains that bit the dog's now alive i thought it was actually a gunner but the dog is now alive the kid's not a zombie anymore the young girl's fine everything is fine okay except for the house is ruined they're gonna have to explain that to their parents who are away on like a business trip okay quality of this movie five i'm not gonna say this very often that was a top 10 five out of five quality movie the comparability one I cannot really compare these two movies. It's not very Gremlin-esque, okay? If anything, I'm going to say it's Evil Dead, Goosebumps, maybe a little bit of, like, a little salt and pepper of, uh, of, of Gremlins. Not Nothing, don't, oh, nobody clip that. The Monsters, two when they're puppets, four when they're not. Give it a 3.5. Get out of here. In in earnest, in, you know, to, to sum this all up, sometimes copying is the best way to learn because as these films went on, uh, as I say, Critters is probably the most obvious one, but even Ghoulies, the more sequels they got, the further away from Gremlins they got. And we got some really good movies from that. Ghoulies Go to College is is amazing. It's a three stooge. It's what Gremlins 2 wanted to be. And that, that makes it amazing um, that these films can even exist just by cheerily copying off a bigger production company. Critters started you know if there was no critters there would be no titanic at all really billy zane and leonardo dicaprio were both in these movies that's incredible also the guy from that star trek rip off that's incredible that's insane without critters there would be no titanic how can you wrap your head around this so but without any titanic there wouldn't be any avatar so you know we've sort of lost loss uh don't forget to like, subscribe, watch me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mostly call. If I don't see you through a week, I'll see you through a window. Goodbye!